Welcome to our lecture online. In the previous video, we were able to find the relationship between spherical coordinates and Cartesian coordinates, especially we were able to define x, y, and z in terms of r, which is the length of the position vector of a point in space, and the angles theta and phi, or theta and phi, because that's the way we defined it. So now what we need to do is we need to find expressions for the cosine of theta, the sine of theta, the cosine of phi, and the sine of phi. So when we plug that in here, we have a way to convert from spherical back to Cartesian coordinates. So in order to do that, we need to have expressions for those right there. So starting out, we can say that r must be equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared plus z squared. That's the uh, Pythagorean theorem in three dimensions, and if we square both sides of these three equations, we end up with these three equations right here. They're going to come in handy. So first, let's try to define the cosine of theta. Well, the cosine of theta right here can be defined in terms of z and r. So we can say that the cosine of theta can simply be defined as z divided by r. And so that would be an easy way to define the cosine of theta. Now let's define the sine of theta. Well, to define the sine of theta, we need to do something with these two equations right here. So let's start with x squared plus y squared, which would be equal to r squared times the sine square of theta times the cosine square of phi plus r squared times the sine square of theta times the sine square of phi. And then notice that on the right side, I can factor out an r square and a sine square of theta. So this is equal to r squared times the sine square of theta. And then we have left here, we have the cosine square of phi plus we have the sine square of phi. And of course, the cosine square of phi plus the sine square of phi, that's equal to 1. So essentially, we can say that x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared times the sine square of phi. Taking the square root of both sides and solving for sine of theta, we can then say that the sine of theta is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared divided by r. Because we divide both sides by r squared, take the square root of both sides, and that's what we get. So that means we now have an expression that defines the sine of theta in terms of x, y, and r, and the cosine of theta in terms of z and r. All right, we're halfway there. Now we need to define the cosine of phi and the sine of phi. So how are we going to do that? The cosine of phi and the sine of phi. Hey. I need a hint. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think we need to look at the diagram. That's what we need to do. All right. So the hint is as follows. Take a look at the diagram. And here, to find the cosine of phi and the sine of phi, the cosine of phi can be found by taking this distance right here. Now, this distance here, this distance can be defined as r times the sine of theta. So that would be r times the sine of theta. And then, this distance here would be x. And this distance here would be y. And so we can define the sine of theta Oh, the sine of phi, I should say, the sine of phi, that would be equal to the opposite side over the hypotenuse. So we're looking at the sine of phi right here, and if this is phi, the sine of phi would be the opposite side, which is y. So the opposite side is y, and the hypotenuse is r sine theta. So we can say that the sine of phi is equal to y divided by the hypotenuse, and the hypotenuse is r sine theta theta. Okay, we can do the same for the cosine of phi. The cosine of phi is equal to the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse, and the adjacent side would be x, and the hypotenuse would be r times the sine of theta, and that would be cosine of phi. So we have the sine of phi like this, and the cosine of phi like this that we got off of the xy plane relationship between the hypotenuse, which is r sine theta, the x value and the y value, x value being the adjacent to the angle and y value being the opposite to the angle. And so that's how we define the sine of phi and the cosine of phi. Now, let's plug that in here. So we can say that the sine of phi is equal to y in the numerator divided by r 
times the sine of theta. Now the sine of theta is defined somewhere else, that's so defined over here. The sine of theta is defined as that. That would be the square root. So the sine of theta is in the denominator. That would be the square root of x squared plus y squared divided by r. So divided by r, that means r goes in the numerator, like this. And notice the r's cancel out, and I'm left with y divided by the square root of x squared plus y squared. So that's the equivalent to the sine of phi. Now we can do the same for the cosine of phi. So the cosine of phi is equal to x over r times the sine of theta. And of course that can be equal, written as x divided by r right here. And the sine of theta, uh, the sine of theta, where's the sine of theta? Right here, which is this. That would be the square root of x squared plus y squared divided by r. So that divide by r goes in the numerator. And again, the r's cancel out. We're left with x over, um, x over, let's see here. So the cosine of phi would be written as x divided by the square root of x squared plus y squared. So now we have the sine of phi is defined in terms of x and y's, the cosine of phi in terms of x and y's, the cosine of theta in terms of z and r, and of course r is equal to this, and the sine of theta which is equal to this divided by r, and r of course is equal to that. So now we have defined all four of these trigonometric functions. We're now ready to convert any function from spherical to Cartesian coordinates because whatever we have here can now be defined in terms of x and y's and z's. Now we're ready to take our function that we're going to solve and convert first from spherical to Cartesian coordinates and then we can find the divergence of that particular function. But first we had to get to this step, we had to be able to define sine, cosine of theta, sine of phi and cosine of phi in terms of x, y's and z's. And that is how it's done.